it almost makes it hard to watch other people use their computers at times. Like if I'm like sitting next to my wife and she's like using some kind of a task and like she's just like not keyboard native, you know, and you're just like kind of pulling your hair out. You're just like, oh no, 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 just copy them all, just copy them all. What are the things that you do the most? Like when you sit down on your computer, whether it's to work or to sort out life things, you know, book a holiday. Honestly, most things fall into three buckets. Unfortunately, Twitter is probably a whole bucket in itself. I spend too much time on there. I do a lot of stuff in Figma. I'm in Figma every single day. And then I write a lot. And obviously now that I'm, I'm doing like the newsletter and the podcast and, and these interviews, like there's a lot of writing that's involved there. But I also am just naturally someone who writes to think too. So like if I'm even you know, working on a design idea. Like I don't really sketch. I don't have a notebook on my desk anywhere. I pretty much just write in bullet points as a way to process ideas and like think through different like edge cases and scenarios. And so that's like a big part of what I'm doing is like, you'll hear a lot of typing if you walk in on me in my office. Why don't you share your screen with us and show us how Raycast helps you achieve those tasks? or how Raycast helps you stay in the flow when you want to get writing or when you want to prepare a podcast? By far, the thing that I do the most frequently is I search for my Figma files. Like if Raycast did nothing but allow me to search for my Figma files, I would still pay for it because it's that helpful. Like, so I've mapped it to a hotkey. So I do option F and then that's going to pull up all my recent files. It's been over a year since I've used the native Figma UI. If you're watching this and you're still clicking through files and clicking on projects and you like moving your mouse up to the search to type a name, like, oh man, you got to come to the winning team. It's so much faster oh, yeah, to definitely. just do this. One workflow that I've been really, really enjoying lately is uh, I have this like covers photo template. So I've often typed like option F type ideas, and then it's going to bring up these cover photos here. And it's just like a simple component template that I've been using to create these social share images. And these are based off of the weekly articles that I write. So what I need to do is come up with some kind of a metaphor that I can then plug into Visual Electric in order to generate one of these images. I just take like a body of text that I've written. Maybe it's just like the intro for instance, I'll copy that to my clipboard. And then I have this preset where I can just type metaphor and it's gonna pull up a cover photo metaphor. And then I can just paste in some chunk of text. Sometimes I'll paste the whole episode or sometimes I'll paste like the whole article or just like the intro. And then it will generate a list of ideas, so like a chameleon or tools, a map with milestones. And I take little key phrases and I can copy them and then I'll come over to this visual electric setup here and I can just paste in and hit enter and it's going to automatically create it in this predefined style. And so it like kind of just makes it so much easier for me to pull out these metaphors. And all I've done is gone into my presets and I just pasted in like a bunch of previous ones that I've used and kind of coached the AI. I'm like what I'm looking for. And it saves a lot of time. Like, Man, this I is love like that. Now my this is process. so cool. Like yeah. presets is quite new. Like we only really shipped presets yeah. a few weeks ago. And I, I love to see that you're already using it because at first I thought it was going to be an AI command, which to be fair could pro pro probably give you similar results. But it's nice to see they're using a preset because then you have more control over uh, the system instructions, the creativity, where they should generate an image. So that's very cool. And that's a really nice use case as well. I have another one that is my writing style, which is probably pretty self-explanatory. We maybe don't even have to look at it, but like I've fed in a lot of examples of my writing. I basically have just told it, hey, I'm gonna paste in a chunk of text and I want you to reply with two suggestions for how I can improve the writing. I like having two things to look at. And so then I coach it on the formatting and then below is just like a whole dump of, of how I write kind of thing for context. So I use this constantly. I think I probably used this 50 times last night. You're making really good use of system instructions there, man. By providing so much text that was yeah. initially written by you, then you're essentially training the model, right? 
So that's very good. Exactly. I'm going to steal that, man. With my style. Exactly. And that, <laughs> I used to spend so much time giving context and like not, if I'm ever in a situation where I feel myself giving lengthy context to AI more than once, it's like, well, that should just be a preset now. All right, let's move on. What else? What else do you do? It's so little, but I love it so much is the ability to just search for emojis and have it intelligently recommend emojis based off of like a phrase. Because I'm like, again, I like emojis in my writing. I like it to be very conversational and kind of fun. And so like all the time I will do something like, you know, feeling empowered where obviously there's not an emoji for that, but then being able to generate that list, I don't know what I would do without this anymore. And in fact, when I have to use native applications to add emojis, it's so frustrating yeah. <laughs> because I can't find anything as easily. This is the classic example of a feature that I didn't know I wanted, you know, like, and then once you have it, you're like, oh man, like, how was I doing this before, you know? I guess even continuing that example, something else that I use a million times a day is Command Shift V is what gives me access to my clipboard history. So I can see those at a glance. I'm always opening this up, searching for clipboards. And it kind of changes the way that I think about copy and paste too. Yeah. So like I'm always copying these same three links, <laughs> the YouTube and Spotify and Apple. And pre-Raycast, I would copy it. I go to the other window, I paste, I come back, copy it, go to the other window and paste. And, and now I just like have built this habit where, oh, whoops, where I'll just right click and copy everything that I need all in one go. And then I kind of just have that in my clipboard for the rest of, of the night. And so like as I'm, cause I'll paste these into Framer, I'll paste them into convert kit, I'll paste them into a separate CMS. And this way I can just go like this and I have them right there. And maybe if I add a bunch more things, then I can just like, you know, search for YouTube and, and I'll get what I need at a glance. And it's the great thing about it is that it just changes the way you think. Like the example you just gave is the perfect example of how it changes the way that you interact with your computer. And sometimes I feel like the operating systems that are available to us, they haven't really changed that much for a few decades, you know, like, sure, there's been new things. But like fundamentally, there's some things that has not changed that much. So a lot of people are still doing things like copy, you know, command option tab or command tab, or whatever, or is it command tab, and then go into another app and paste and then command tab again and copy again. And then you override your history. And in some situations, overriding your history can be like a bad thing. If you've got something really, bad. really yeah. important there. <laughs> so like yeah. knowing that I've got that history, it's really good. I'm glad they used that one. It almost makes it hard to watch other people use their computers at times. Like if I'm like sitting next to my wife and she's like using some kind of a task and like she's just like not keyboard native, you know, and yeah. you're just like kind of pulling your hair out. You're just like, oh no, 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 no. Just copy them all. Just copy them all. So, Even if you're primarily a mouse user, it can still really benefit just by knowing that everything you copy is being saved. You know what I mean? You can always retroactively go and access those entries if you need to. I once copied a URL for Raycast changelog and our changelog is basically raycast.com slash changelog slash the version, right? Like 1.76. And I copied it once. And since then, every time that we write a tweet announcement, I just open up clipboard history and I just search for changelog. And then I just take the change log that's there and I just replace, oh, the, I replace the version. And that could be a snippet, but at the same time, it just works for me. It's funny you say that because I'm not like a heavy snippet user, mm. actually. Like I have a, a few, like I have like my Calendly link and things like that. But like a specific example that comes to mind is like there's like this mid cohort check in that I send to Figma Academy students. And then I typically have some kind of like a, um, like a follow-up based on, you know, a few different follow-ups based off of what they said and I'll tweak it, but you know, I want my starting point. I don't want to type this from scratch a hundred times. And I, I just use clipboard history. Like I just command V search for like my keyword and then it just goes in and like, yeah, you're right. Like it could be a snippet, but this totally works for me. And yeah. All right, cool, man. Let's keep going. I'm, I'm liking this. One that I use so much is the picker. Uh, the color picker um, oh, yeah. as a designer like it's just super fun so i have it mapped to command option p like so 
and I use this all the time, just like for like making little graphics or I'm like, I save so much design inspiration too. And so sometimes I'll just like copy something, paste it into my notion where I kind of organize things, but then I'll just like grab the hex code and save it as well. So that's like a little one. Uh, I also like, I like the ruler too. So I'll do stuff like this when I'm like looking at a different website to get an idea of spacing, which is a fun one. And then another kind of, it's kind of random, but so I listen to music a lot. Like we're talking 14 hours a day, typically, where it's just on at all times. In fact, it's actually rare that I won't have music, just like some kind of instrumental music going in my headphones while I'm even like interviewing someone because it helps me kind of stay a little bit oh, wow. focused. Oh, wow, that's cool. In all of my meetings, like with companies, everything, I is always on, I always have music. Is it on right now? Nobody has Yes, nobody has any idea. What I uh, do is I like this Spotify um, extension where I can generate a playlist. And so what I will do is do something like, I don't know, instrumental, funky, electronic. And it'll actually generate a playlist for me. And then I can one click add it to Spotify and that's what I'll listen to. And this is kind of like my way of finding music based off of moods. I always wanted a whole product to do this for me because I just think that Spotify is not good at recommending music. And it's kind of funny that like the way that I have solved that problem for myself is actually through the Raycast UI. That's amazing, man. Like this, I was not expecting that you'd show this command, by the way. Like we first prototyped this command ages ago when we were integrating AI into Raycast. If you're a developer and you want to build a Raycast extension, we also give you access to the AI API. And this command specifically uses the AI API under the hood. So shout out to Tom for putting that command together. But this is quite new, man. Like we only shipped this like three weeks ago. So I'm quite oh, surprised. I, I had it that. installed within an hour. Like I was using it within an hour. Amazing. I saw it on Twitter and I was like, finally, let's go. And I've been using it every day since. I've got one last question. Have you ever attempted at creating an extension? Have you ever tried creating one or not yet? I haven't yet. I would like to. I would like to. I, I, I haven't ventured into that side of things yet. Do you know what would be cool? Like a dive club extension where it would list all of the episodes and then people can do command K and then play on Spotify or play cool. on YouTube or even open the guests, uh, Twitter, like all of the links that you have or look at the footnotes, you know? So like, that would be cool to have a dive club extension. If you want, we can uh, hook that up together. Yeah, that's pretty interesting, actually. I never even thought about Manline as an entry point to content like that. That's innovative stuff. I haven't seen that done for a yeah, podcast man. before. Dive I like club, it. Raycast extension. We should get it going. Yeah. I'm, let's do it. <laughs> let's do it, man. All right. Thanks so much for showing us how, how you use Raycast. Uh, it was a pleasure to have you on. And I look forward to, you know, staying in touch and uh, listening to all of the podcasts and stuff that you've been doing, man. Thank you. Thanks, man. I appreciate having me on. This was fun.